Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Daily Alert, AMI Doctors Daily Alert. And uh, we have really been um, overwhelmed by how many people have logged into this or reached into this. We have over a million impressions on Facebook and 222,000 people have reached into these podcasts. So um, we have a viral reaction to a virus. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, need a little humor in these dark days of COVID-19. Um, but yeah, we're trying to get the word out to people. Look, you know, uh, there's a lot of hype out there. There's a lot of real data. There's a lot of false data. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of worry. And fear and worry never helps people make a better decision. And we are leaders in healthcare. And I, I am proud of our, our group uh, reaching out and, and taking the bull by the horns and, and being the leader. 85% of our clients still have their doors open in this crisis, um, which if you look at some other professions, those numbers are not that high. So what we've been doing is having different guests on the show and, <laughs> excuse me, coronavirus. No, it's just my throat. At the time uh, that this coronavirus is hitting, Oregon, which is where I've been locked down, is having record pollen counts. So, uh, we had a lot of rain and then all of a sudden, boom, it got sunny for the last 10 days. And I get a warning every day about the pollen counts. I was sitting on my deck with my wife yesterday and the wind blew and a yellow cloud went across our 68 acres. Uh, it's, it's just ridiculous. So anyway, um, we're very happy to have a guest on tonight who is one of our clients, uh, David Seagraves from Cincinnati, Ohio, actually Mason, Ohio is where your clinic is, correct? Yep. And you're originally from Indiana, is that correct? Yes. Which is right in that whole area, the tri-state area of Cincinnati, Kentucky, and Indiana. Um, David is not a doctor. He's a business person, and he works with uh, his family. He has a very uh, chiropractic family. But your degree, David, you have a BS in business administration and entrepreneurship from Ball State University. That's in Indiana, is that correct? That's correct. And Ball State, when you got that degree in 2008 – was one of the top five universities offering that degree. That's correct. So uh, your, your business background that you've been a pleasure to work with because you are a business person and you look at things a lot like I do uh, from the viewpoint of a business's strongest asset is its reputation and it gets that reputation from delivery. And uh, you know, I wanna dispel the old myth that oh, business guy only cares about the money, that's not true. And I've had people say, I'm a business guy. I only care about the numbers. And I say to myself, well, then that means they're not a business guy um, because a business guy cares about much more than just the numbers. Numbers are important, but they're not the only thing. So you've been great to work with. Tell us a little about your family's background in chiropractic. Yeah, so my father, um, I originally started working with him in 2012. I've got a father, three uncles, and an aunt that are all chiropractors. Um, wow. I think three of them went to Palmer. Uh, a couple of them went to life. So there's some right. different, you know, uh, aspects to their philosophies and approach to things. Um, but, you know, we've always, our whole family's always been about helping people. And I think, you know, I, I, the first time I was adjusted, I was about two days old. Oh, okay. Uh, it's been going was... for a long time. I, I very much believe in chiropractic. I know that it works. And um, my family is, is absolutely, uh, you know. Now, when you, when you went to school, was your idea that, oh, I'm going to get this degree to work with my family? No, actually, when I went to school, I was putting together a business plan for a drug rehab facility. And that was actually part of our, uh, our final, um, it's sort of a shark tank situation when you graduate that program. And that was actually my business plan that I was putting together. So, I mean, I've always wanted to help people. Uh, just not, wasn't thinking with the chiropractic thing. Right. In 2012, I joined up with uh, my dad. I helped integrate his clinic then. And Was that your idea? Well, it was his idea originally to integrate, but I looked at the plan and he was he hadn't been able to implement it. And then I said, "You know what? This is a great this is a great plan from a business point of view and we'll be able to help more patients with more services. We should get better outcomes." So we implemented uh, we were with a different company in the beginning, didn't go so well. And then I think about 2014, we hooked up with AMI. Yep. And everything just went extremely smooth since that point. So we grew that clinic 
to at one point we had three clinics. Um, then we got rid of one of those. We were back down to two. We sold those off. Um, and then since then, I've actually gone and opened one in Mason and another one in Hebron, Kentucky. How about that? So you are uh, part of our master's program, you and your father, uh, which is the top, you know, some of our top clients that get together and we mastermind three times a year. And you've been to several of those events. Um, so things are going along just great. And whammo, we get hit with the coronavirus. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. What happened when that, when that happened? What did you start thinking? You know, a lot of people started thinking, should I close? Should I open? What went through your mind and what was your decision? Well, I think I, I think I went through that initially, but you know, I, I quickly recovered and realized, you know, the, the biggest thing is we need to make sure that our patients feel safe. And so we started a phone campaign where I actually had the doctors all on the phones with the patients, you know, at the very beginning of the week, you know, we actually see patients Tuesday through Friday. So uh, Mondays, we started those phone calls and all Tuesday mornings, we had them reconfirm all of the patients for the week, make sure that the patients knew the protocols that we had implemented in terms of sanitizing and social distancing, and that we were following all the guidelines. Uh, we actually also put up, I have at the front, uh, a social distancing sign. Uh, it's actually a nice, a hard plastic sign. Uh, I've got in the bathrooms, we've got signs on how to wash your hands properly, um, using hand sanitizer and all that. And, and it's, it's a twofold thing. I mean, you want to, the biggest thing is you want your patients to feel safe. So that they keep coming in, so that they keep getting the care that they need, because at the end of the day, that is what's going to keep them healthy. You know, this isn't sick yeah. care. It's, 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 healthcare, you know, and we're trying to keep them healthy and keep those immune systems uh, functioning at their highest level. Yeah. So your thought process is exactly how mine was. And, and that's actually starting to emerge. What I realized, um, I had the same fears when this first happened. And I thought, what are we going to do? And then I thought, well, you know what, there's always been this division in healthcare about treating the illness or actually helping the body, the patient's body resist the illness. Uh, John Rosa who has uh, talked to, at our conventions, you've heard him speak, great guy. And he always explains it like this. He says with this, with the, and his big push is he's on the White House task force for the opioid crisis. And he says, you got all these people uh, that are dying from these opioids. It's like going to a river and you see all these people floating down the river heading to the, towards a waterfall. And he said, the first reaction is let's get them out of the river. But somebody's got to eventually say, where are all these people falling in the river? <laughs> so you know, somebody's got to go upstream and start saying, how do we prevent this? And we have seen emergence of different doctors now saying, look, we got to start focusing more on building our immunity in this country. And a lot of things that go along with that includes things like exercise, moving the muscles to pump the lymphatic system, taking nutrients and doing all that stuff. And we've been talking about this on our podcast. So have you been watching the daily alert and the summit? Did it help you at all? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, one of the one of the first things that, that we liked was the idea about the free B12 injections. So we yeah. started the campaign doing that. We actually, just because we were, in a, and I still feel a little unsure about it, um, you know, we're not sure if the restrictions are going to tighten or if they're going to loosen or when that's going to happen, especially in Ohio. Um, right. Which I can get way more into that. But, you know, um, so as a precaution, we actually launched a uh, website where we can drop ship, uh, you know, biogenetics vitamins and yep. some of our neuropathy products uh, directly to the patients. Um, and that's been a success. And so, and we've just simply, you know, we're doing handouts to all the patients that come in. We actually have a major uh, letters out campaign right now, which, which was actually uh, that, that study that you put out, uh, well, you didn't put out the study, but that you sent us. I promoted it, yeah. Yeah, and so we're, we're sending that study out along with a letter. Um, and I think this week alone, we've had over 200 letters out. And in there, we also put our insert about our, our immunity kits and uh, some of the different vitamins on our shop. That's all been extremely successful. Um, you know, and, and anyway, so that's that's what we did in the beginning to really promote and, and help people, uh, you know, to promote immunity and, and help people stay healthy. Also, 
we also, like some of our more qualified patients um, that we know disposable income isn't such of a, a big issue, you know, they're, they're all, they've all been looking at longer term packages using stem cells to boost their immunity as well. So we put together, you know, three month packages for uh, several people where they paid in advance and um, they're getting infusions or injections um, to help support, you know, a healthy immune system. Right now you're, of course you have them sign a disclaimer saying that, you know, this is not proven and this is just to, for them to see the benefit. But um, what, what a lot of people may or may not know is that um, Predictive Technologies, a company we work with a lot, um, just uh, applied for an emergency use application for Corsite, their uh, st product with viable stem cells in it, um, in an IV form to be used on a coronavirus. And it looks like they're going to get that for um, you know, a period of time and then calculate the stats. And that'll be another study out there using actually Predictive's product by the government um, to see, is this going to work? Now, so far, since that first study came out in China that we talked about, um, there's been another study done in China and then another study done in Israel. And so far, I believe 100% of the patients who got the IV of um, Wharton's Jelly product pulled out of the coronavirus in three days, which is amazing. So the fact that they, they're getting issued this emergency use application um, so they can do this, it's going to be anything. It, it's just going to be all good for the idea of, you know, two sides of the coin. Yeah, isolate everybody, which is smart, but boost our immune system, which means it's harder for us to get it. Or if we do get it, we could be asymptomatic with it and, and build an immunity to it without even getting the, the symptoms, which I think has happened to a lot of people. And now there's data coming out like that. So well done on that part, but let's talk about your patient flow. Have you taken a hit on your patient flow? So initially we did, because I said initially we were, you know, I had a moment of contraction and a moment of thinking small and worried and things like this, but then we kind of flipped that around and, and we actually really started marketing very heavily and we launched a TV campaign. And really? My realization, yeah. And my realization was, well, okay, these people are all going to be at home. They're all going to be watching the news. So if I can somehow get in front of them, either just before the news or just after the news, this is going to have a big impact. And that, <laughs> it was a huge impact. We actually had uh, 12 new patients on the book for today, nine new patients today, today, today. Wow. nine for tomorrow. We had wow. um, eight yesterday. I think we had seven or eight on Tuesday. It's been, it's actually been, we've been so busy and um, you know, I can say our cash sales dipped for maybe a week or two. La yesterday we did 54,000 in cash sales. Wow. Um, wow. And we've been signing up a ton of insurance patients. Our insurance, our insurance uh, program is just booming right now. Right. So, um, and I, think are you actually doing better in the middle of this crisis right now? Yeah. <laughs> right wow. now we're doing great. So, and, and, uh, and it's all because you stuff, stuff that fear in the back seat and stop listening to it. Absolutely. And um, I think that I think that this is traditional marketing right now, I think is going to be way it's going to penetrate way further than it used to because people are at home. They're going to read the newspaper. They're going to yeah. they're glued to the TV. You know, um, radio might even penetrate more than it used to at this point. Right. So so we definitely have seen huge success with that and um, we've re-upped our campaigns and, and we're going at it again over the next couple months so well you know uh, you're not even a doctor and you're the epitome of what I thought of with uh, this whole virus where we could actually step up to the plate and claim our rightful place in healthcare there is two different theories in healthcare and one of them I, I think they both need to be part of our healthcare system the one that's largely ignored is how do you build you immunity or the make the body actually healthier by improving function instead of just trying to treat the symptoms. Um, and if we only treat the symptoms by quarantining, when we come out of quarantine, we're going to have another surge of this virus. But if while people are quarantining, they're doing things to build their immunity, decrease inflammation, we're, that's how we're going to get through this and not have a relapse in the country. Um, and you're doing your part for that for sure. Everything you mentioned today the educating the patients when they come in, giving them the studies, giving them the information, 
um, not being afraid to reach out and get people to come in. All those people that are coming in, are, are they mostly, are you getting a lot, a lot of people coming in for chronic degenerative arthritis and back problems and neck problems? Absolutely, and, and I have a theory of it. I'll tell you, I think that we have reached, you know, now, depending on the area of the country you're in, we're now three weeks, four weeks into stay-at-home orders, quarantine, and whatnot, and the only places that you're allowed to travel are to the grocery, to pick up food, uh, you know, maybe to the liquor store, oddly enough, and to the doctor. Well, there's one more. There's one more. There's one more? Okay, what's that one? Lowe's or Home Depot. Lowe's or Home Depot. That's right. Have you been there? I, I have. It's packed. It's unbelievable. It's always packed. And one of our doctors last week said she went there. She was ready to start closing her doors, but she got to Lowe's and she's like, or Home Depot, and she says, this place is packed. These people are all going to go home and hurt themselves. Where are they going to go? And she, uh, so she, that's what she did. And all of a sudden, you know, her numbers went down a little bit, but she was doing 30 visits a day. And I think now she's doing like, I don't know, 15 to 20. Wow. Yeah, so I think I think that's a major factor. I think we'll see more of that as the weeks go on here, that people are going to be, I think, you know, there's even protests now happening uh, on these stay-at-home orders, and I think people are, are going to become more and more unsettled with just staying at home. That's right. It is the right time to reach out, get in front of them from a marketing aspect, keep your name in front of them, make sure that they know it's safe and you're following the guidelines, and we're just on our normal, like skip the immunity stuff, just on our normal services, our, you know, arthritis uh, programs, our um, regenerative medicine programs, our neuropathy programs, those are, those are just loading up right now. Well, th that's the exact thing that I was trying to get the message across with all of these podcasts, what you just said. You're reaching out and you're saying, let's let all these people with these back pain and neck pain problems and arthritic problems, which is the number one burden on our emergency care system, you're taking that burden off of the hospitals, taking it on yourself, and when they come in, you're educating them about boosting their immune system. What a win-win for the country, for the community, for your practice, and for you. Totally, totally. Yeah. We're helping a lot of people right now, it's great. That's awesome. So, you know, you kind of answered my, my last question is, what do you see the future as? Do you have any final thoughts on what you see is gonna happen from here forward? I think that if, if we continue to stay in front of people from a marketing aspect, I don't think that they're going to shut clinics like ours down. I think that nope. they're going to continue to see them as uh, more essential and more essential and more essential because it's exactly what you just voiced. You know, we're, we're taking the load off of these hospitals. Yeah. Uh, and I think that right now is probably the right time to really reinvest in your marketing, um, up your marketing and promote. And um, I think, you know, we've done that. And I can tell you that we are way busier now than we were a month ago before all this. Yeah. Happened. Yeah. So um, we're going to have uh, uh, tomorrow night, we're going to have um, my managers uh, from my office speak again, because they were saying the same things you're saying. And uh, they had a double whammy last week. They got hit by a tornado. I mean, the tornado was less than a mile from our clinic and it wiped out the neighborhood. My executive director, she's going to tell the story tomorrow night, but they had to actually get a chainsaw to cut their way out of their, property um and uh they're still working <laughs> they're still delivering so kudos to you for taking the bull by the horns and doing what every doctor should do and uh you're not even a doctor so thank you for doing that you've done a great service to your community and a great service to the country and uh david we're glad you're on our team absolutely i'm glad to be on the team and i really appreciate that and I would just say to anybody out there that's watching this, you know, you should really make sure that you do tune into the health alerts and you do stay connected to something positive, um, even 10X owners live, um, all of that, and just keep the positivity uh, going. And, and that's one thing that has helped me is staying off the news and trying to listen to people that are, are forward thinkers and, and trying to move the ball forward and, and actually get better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to let you get back to work because I know you got a lot to do. And uh, thank you for participating in this. And um, we'll talk to you very, very soon. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. See you soon. Okay. Okay. So we're here for another segment of the Daily Alert, amidoctors.com. And uh, this episode, we're talking to three different doctors in three different parts of the country. 
and how they've dealt with the coronavirus. And now I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Ken Gilman uh, from just north of Nashville. Uh, what's the name of your town again, Ken? Clarksville. Clarksville, right where the, the Army base is. That's correct. So um, Fort Campbell, I believe. So then you've been in practice. You went to Logan in 1998. You graduated. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And um, <coughs> you kind of wanted to own your own practice. And you looked around. You found one in Tennessee. You're originally from the Northeast, correct? Yes. Yep. So you found this one in Tennessee, and you opened up in 1999, correct? Beginning of 99, correct. Good. And you've been a chiropractic practice, pretty successful one. Um, between you and your uh, associate, you've been doing about 300 visits a week? Yeah, up until the coronavirus issue. That's, that was our average. Okay. Um, so in November of 2019, you joined AMI. That's right. And you went through the holidays and you put all your legals in and everything else. And right about the beginning of March, you launched your medical services. And that was right at the same time as we launched the coronavirus. <laughs> So how did that go? What kind of thoughts went through your head? Uh, man, I, I don't know that I felt any anxiety over it. I just knew it was going to be different, but I was already doing something I really didn't know how to do yet, right? I right, was, right. Learning in the process. Um, so I don't want to say it was easier, but it wasn't anything we weren't already planning to do because the whole thing was going to be new for us. Right. And you also have already been through at least one economic crisis. 2008 was pretty scary and you right. weathered that. So, you know, I, I went through the same thing. I wasn't really scared either. Although, uh, you know, there was some uh, concerns, but um, I guess because if you've been through these things before, there's never been anything quite like this, but uh, 2008 didn't go away in a couple months. And this looks like it might go away in a couple months, although it's bigger reaching. 2008 was kind of scary. We did very well, by the way, in the 2008 crisis, uh, just by giving calm to our employees and to our patients. So that's the same path I took. So tell me what path did you take? I, it was the same thing. It just, you know, this too shall pass. Um, okay. A good friend of mine, Dr. Mark Percival, um, we talked years ago, he had founded a, a company called Health Coach, wrote a book called uh, Body by Design, Healthy by Choice. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, I remember him saying something years ago where it was uh, always choose fascination over frustration, right? Because the, just speaking the two words changes your physiology and frustrate, man, just, it's negative. Yeah. <laughs> or that's fascinating. Hmm. Yeah. Your, your entire posture changes just for speaking the two words. That's right. In order to understand the difference between the two, you have to know that in order for something to be appropriately frustrating, you had to have some control over the situation. So That's right. if you screwed up, if you made a mistake, especially if you screwed up twice, by all means, be frustrated. Everything else is... Oops. So that's the choice, we, right? We, we missed that. We lost, we lost your feet a little bit there, Ken. Okay. You said, you said everything else, and then it cut out. No, oh, well, everything else is fascinating. Oh, there you go. That right? makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. So then you got you got hit with this fascinating pandemic. Yeah. And uh, what did you do? Did you 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 watch? You told me you watched the summit, right? I did. Tell and me about that. What was your, your thoughts? Once I got past the feeling of drinking from a fire hose, you know, we we just we just had to pick a spot and start. What were the tools we already had that we could implement right away? And uh, we would already uh, align with Zingit and Patient Pop. So we reached out to them and they were fantastic for getting us set up with what we needed to send out and when and how to get what part of our demographic lined up. So we sent out text message blasts. We sent out email blasts. We did Facebook posts. Um, it took us a little while, but we got a YouTube channel set up so we could send links to emails for people that don't engage social media. Um, and we just started hitting them with things like, this is a safe environment, uh, letting them know that we've spread our schedule out so that no one's going to be sitting in the reception area. You know, instead of on a clinic side, instead of scheduling on time, we started scheduling by room, right? We have nine treatment rooms. Um, so we were able to accommodate people. They come in, they sign in, they go straight to their room and they stay there till they get treated and they get out. And we don't right. have people running across each other except on a rare occasion. Okay, good. So you let your patients know that that would be the environment, so it's okay for them to come in. 
Um, the last speaker we had, uh, I, I, I conveyed this to him as well. That goes a long way. And where we got that idea was Colleen and I fly all the time. And the last couple of flights we had is when this started happening. And I noticed something I'd never seen before ever. And the flight attendant cleaned the bathroom herself twice <laughs> during the flight. And I realized, oh, they're actually cleaning this plane pretty good. And I figured it's safe to fly. And I never got coronavirus. So um, I figured that may same message should be something that we should send out. We actually came up with this idea before the summit at the mastermind that we had in Reno, Nevada. We were with some of our top doctors and talking about what if this gets shut down and uh, what are we going to do about it? And while we're there, we're in a ski resort, right? They shut the, um, the, uh, the slopes. Yeah. So we were all working. So we were outside, but all of a sudden we noticed all these skiers inside the lodge. I'm like, they shut the slopes to concentrate all the skiers into the building <laughs> to avoid the coronavirus. It didn't make sense. But we realized something was about to happen. So we started coming up with a plan for this. And uh, Colleen and I decided to do this summit with our partners and just get as much information out there to get people to calm their employees down, calm themselves down, <coughs> and calm their patients down. So tell me how it went when you started communicating. Did people show up? Yeah, we the first week after they started initial in the, the stay at home, of course, Tennessee kind of lagged behind, but our numbers were real low in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had a, it was more of a suggestion. It was a safer at home order as opposed to a stay at home order. Um, so that first week after that all started to shut down, we didn't feel much change. The following week, we dropped to about 50%. Got it. So you did have a decrease in your volume, but at the same time, you're launching this whole new line of services, your medical services. So how did that play in? Um, well, you know, the first thing that everybody started talking about was how all elective surgeries are shut down. Well, you know, if you want to get sick, go into the surgical suite, right? Right, right. If you want to get sick, go where the sick people are, right? So nobody, not only are they being told they can't come, they don't want to go. They know what the risk is there. So I just started going through my patient base and thinking, patient base and thinking about all the people that I knew were either considering a knee replacement or a hip replacement or rotator cuff surgery or whatever it was. And I just started calling them. I picked up the phone, made a personal phone call. Hey, how you doing? I know your surgery has been canceled, but what's going on in your head? Are you comfortable? Everything okay? Is there anything we can do for you? And then I just let them talk. And what happened? They would get to a point where I just don't know what I'm going to do. And I said, well, you know, just turns out we now have something that we can offer you to help you avoid that surgery altogether. And next thing you know, they're signing up, they're on Natalie's schedule and they're getting the exam. We've set up, oh, uh, let me back up to the appointment visits. I have completely shut down my schedule for Tuesdays because all I do on Tuesdays is report of findings for regenerative medicine. Okay. So we're keeping those numbers even though I've taken a full day out of my schedule. Right, right, that's awesome. Yeah. So you, you've had some sales and I did see, you know, uh, one of our people from AMI sent out a whole bunch of success quotes from clients and there was no names on them. But you were telling me the very first one was you. So tell me about that. Yeah, that was fantastic. I was blown away by last Tuesday. Um, so previous week, uh, Natalie had, I think, seven different regenerative medicine evaluations that she's done. She's doing them on Wednesdays and Thursdays and all the report of findings are on Tuesdays. We're ready to do the injection that day, but if they need financing or set up a payment plan, or maybe they've had a steroid in the last six weeks, whatever it was, we scheduled them out based on the safe time, the most productive time to do the treatment. Uh, by the end of Tuesday, um, we had sold $54,000 of regenerative medicine. $54,000. Now compare that to your previous practice. What was that like? Oh, you know, three, 300 to 320 patients a week. I think my best collection month uh, was 68,000 prior to that. And you had a $54,000 a day last week. Correct. <laughs> now you told me something yesterday when I talked to you on the phone uh, about um, all these people in Kentucky. You're really close to the Kentucky border. Yep. You want to explain that? So Kentucky shut down chiropractors. The Most only important. state, the only state to do that. And the Kentucky Senate last week um, had passed a bill to reopen chiropractors and the governor vetoed it. He obviously doesn't like chiropractors. I'm sure there's a vendetta there somewhere. Yeah. So, so tell me how that affected you. Well, we're getting calls from the DCs 
that work just across the state line because their patients are calling them saying, I'm hurting, what do I do? So the, the Kentucky chiropractors are calling us and saying, can you take my patients? Absolutely, send them on. Um, so you actually found a source of new patients, not just that way, obviously through calling your old patients and getting them in for new services, but now you have other doctors who are in a state that's shut down sending you their patients. Yes, and that relationship so, will linger on for a long, long time. Yeah, how many, how many new patients did you do last week? I think the final number was 14. 14 new ones. That's an excellent week in a lot of people's books without a coronavirus. In the middle of a coronavirus, you're, you have, you're actually growing back your practice. Maybe you lost 50 or 40% of your current base, but you're getting a new base that's growing right inside this whole thing. Yeah, and our revenue's actually gone up. It, you know, the, 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 biz, the way we do business is changing, but the end result is, is growing. So... Some people would think, oh, my God, I picked the worst time to integrate, but it's apparently turning out to be the best thing you've ever done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you, know, um, you know, the partnership with Grant Cardone, of course, uh, he's in your head. You can't help but keep him in your head. You can flick him off your shoulder, but he comes right back. Especially right, right. If you've read 10X, if you read uh, Be Average or Be Obsessed or Be Average, um, it just stays with you all the time. But there's – he's – Read it and then listen to his audio book because listening to him tell the story adds a whole new level of appreciation for what he's asking you and telling you to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so so <clears throat> that's all fantastic. How many staff do you have? Ah, we are on a skeleton crew for sure, but uh, we always have been. I have three staff members. One is, wow. a, billing, one is a billing specialist. And two, one CXT, so I have a, a CTA that can do x-rays and in the intake process, and then one straight CA. And I'm going to include my wife. She's not technically a staff, but she is quite capable and fills in every hole in this office that is not license specific. That's awesome. That, that's our whole squad. Well, you also have a nurse practitioner and you have the other Cairo. Now, so, yeah. So, yeah, so you're actually like running about six people total? Yes. Maybe seven if you count you? We've just brought on a marketing director oh, okay. uh, who's a friend of mine. Uh, he's a brilliant, brilliant guy. He's, he's done it with, he set up gyms in different places where he would literally build the building and then fill it and then move on, build another one and fill it. And we started talking about the regenerative medicine and all that's coming and the things that we'll be capable to help people with. And he just got fired up about it. Yeah. Well, you should know that at the University of Miami, they're doing a, a, a emergency use application. I believe they're using... Uh, predictive product on people with COVID-19. And every time that study has been done in China, in Israel, and in the United States already, 100% um, of the people who get the uh, IV of stem cells from Wharton's Jelly, the, the predictive product, and we're talking about the core site product, it's the only one with live stem cells, 100% um, of the people resolved in less than a week. And the, they're doing it on critically ill people that have not responded, that are on ventilators, and it's turning them right around. So that's going to be huge news for us using those products in the future. Um, it's going to catch the attention of America for sure. Well, we've, it's been the sharing, most we've been sharing that buzz with our patients already as far as the wellness injections goes, whether it's IV or IM. Yeah. But we're, we're doing our best as, as that information trickles in about what they're doing to treat COVID or anything else. We're slamming it right back out. It's constant. So Go ahead. I was going to say, that's awesome that you're doing that. Is some of this information coming from the Daily Alert? Has that been helpful for you and your staff? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Has uh, your staff been rarely, listening? I very rarely catch them live mm -hmm. because I'm still in clinic, still seeing patients. But, right. you know, I, we, we appreciate the replay. Yeah. We do that because 85% of our client, clients are still open. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and uh, this is the second show or second interview today that is telling us they've actually grown financially during this crisis and you're not taking advantage of anybody. You're just filling a gap in the service that's there. You know, people are hurting. They got to go somewhere that it's, it's uh, important to remember the number one burden on our emergency care system is chronic degenerative arthritis, specifically back and neck pain. And if you stayed open in this whole crisis, which you have, you're actually taking a burden off of our system. Yeah, well, we've taken the, on patients that never would have come to us for certain things. You know, two weeks ago, I had a patient call me, said, I fell off a ladder. I think I broke my shoulder. In the past, he'd have gone to the ER. But on that phone call, he's like, I'm not going to the ER. No way. 
Right. Come on down, man. We'll check it out. We took some x-rays and examined him. He had separated his shoulder. It was not fractured, so we were able to treat him. Wow. There you go. So um, what do you see for the future? Where do you go from here? Oh, man. Uh, nowhere but up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, great, that's a great attitude to have in the middle of this crisis. Well, um, I put out word uh, Friday morning. Um, we're going to start interviewing. I need more help. Good. Well, you know, you're right in the same ballpark as Lowe's and Home Depot. They are packed. Yeah. <laughs> Which probably well, the funny part packed. there is there's a Lowe's right at my back door. Like, people can't go to Lowe's without driving past my building. Really? That's pretty yeah. good. Thing. So, uh, huge. you told me one other thing I wanted to touch on before we go is you said you listening to our summit inspired you and some other AMI doctors to do something. You want to touch on that? Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's, that's stay connected. Right, we need to inspire each other, you know, especially now we're being told to stay apart. Um, we're humans. We have to have interaction with each other. It's That's not right. the same because it's electronic, because we're doing it through a video. It's not the same as being face-to-face -face or in person, but it's way better than disconnecting Yeah. by any means. So I reached out to, I think, six of our AMI colleagues, uh, guys and, and uh, clinics that are or at the same pace or about the same place I am started mm -hmm. when I did or around that time. And uh, we just created a text message group and encouraged everybody just to share your wins. And is it working? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. It's all inspiration. Good. Good. Well, I'm proud of you and uh, an honored to have you on our team because you're exactly who we were trying to reach the type of doctor that would look up and say, see, see the responsibility in the healthcare system and take hold of that responsibility and help to change healthcare, which you're doing. And I think, um, you know, if you look at this COVID-19, yeah, is it the worst thing that ever happened? Yeah, but it could also be the best thing that ever happened to our type of practice because people are starting to realize here's a disease with no cure. The only thing you do is empower your body, which is our philosophy. Improve the function of the body, you can resist anything. So well done. Our mantra from the beginning. Yeah, the only, the only tool we have for this is our own immune system. That's right, that's right. Well done, keep, keep up the good work. And uh, I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more from you in the very near future. So thank you for being part of this today and helping others to hear what you've done. Uh, I appreciate the invite, Mike. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, great. Well, welcome back to part three of today's episode of the Daily Alert with AMI Doctors. And we have our third guest. Um, I'm happy to introduce Dr. John McIntyre from Texas. You're from the Houston area, correct? Yes. Okay, and uh, John has an interesting background. Our first guest to this, uh, in this episode was a business person, wasn't even a doctor. Well, John was also a business person before he became a doctor. Uh, you have a BS in biology and a minor in chemistry from Baylor University, but when you graduated school, you, you were working part-time during school, I guess, for Sherwin-Williams, and you went into management for Sherwin-Williams and launched your business career there and actually did really well there, correct? Yes, that's right. Really so uh, you probably tell the story better than me. Why don't you tell us that story? Because you, John is somebody I've come to value his business uh, acumen because he does have it. And you'll hear that in this interview. But tell us that, your story, John. Yeah, so um, I was getting ready to graduate. And my plan was to actually go to med school. And I got married. I, got, I graduated. Two weeks later, I got married. And then two weeks after that, we found out she was pregnant. So I kind of went, oh, crap. And... I crawled back and begged for my job back and they said, you know what, we got something better. So they put me in management. Um, at that time, didn't quite know what my career was gonna be because that was not my path. And um, I started doing really well in sales. I was getting a promotion about every six to 12 months. Um, the raises were coming in 15, 20% each. And um, that's kind of hard when you're making that kind of money to walk away. Yeah. So I figured that was my new life. And after about eight years, um, I had won the President's Award, and I was standing on a beach in Kauai, and I was seeing a cardiologist. And I was 28 years old. And I, and I said, okay, something's got to change. And so when I got back from Kauai, I went and saw him, and he says, well, you can um, quit your job. You can get a divorce, or you can do both. And I thought, oh, crap. <laughs> so, wow. Um, yeah, at that point, I went back and reassessed, and uh, I had some friends that were chiropractors, and they said, well, you know, you've had chiropractic. Have you ever thought about it? And 
you know, after long discussions, I said, you know what? And I did it. I decided I was going to do chiropractic school. So I quit my job. Now you went to Texas chiropractic college, right? Yes, sir. And you graduated, I believe in 2004, 2004. Okay. So tell us about what you did after you graduated. Um, so, uh, we graduated in December, my wife and I, and, um, I started looking for jobs because after being in the corporate world for a while, I just wanted a job. I just didn't want to have to, res the responsibility. And so um, after interviewing and interviewing and interviewing, um, we kind of sat down and talked, said, hey, let's open a practice. So we signed a lease. It was an empty hole. And um, they didn't give us very much to build it out. My wife goes, how are we going to do this? And I said, well, you're looking at it. So I got in there and uh, hired an electrician and a plumber, and I actually built the clinic myself. Wow. Wow. So uh, that was in 2004. Yes. How long did it take you to become profitable? Uh, well, about a month <laughs> after that, we got hit by a major hurricane. And so, you know, we were shut down for five weeks. And it, in about two and a half years is what it took for us to really get on our feet. And we broke a million dollars our second year in practice. Wow. So you've been through a few crises before and you understand what it's like to go through these crises. Um, but you've, you've actually done well in your career in 2014, you decided to integrate. Yes. It was not with us, but it was with another company and, and you've had a couple companies over the years and how did that go? Um, so yeah, we, uh, we had joined back in 2014, a company and that was pretty much it. They kind of handed us a binder and that's kind of, how it went. So it left a lot of research upon us, which was very stressful. Right. Um, so we were able to, you know, piece it together and get things going. And then uh, I got turned on to you guys. Um, and so when I came to you, we met, I said, look, I'm looking for compliancy. You know, I'm looking for something that's going to hold people accountable, you know, our staff accountable. And you said, Hey, we got that. And so um, uh, we decided to join. And how's that been going? It went great. Um, you know, like I said, with the other ones, uh, you never really got a phone call. And with you guys, you know, at first I was like, man, are these guys ever going to stop calling us? But <laughs> you know what? Every phone call actually built on the next call. Um, yeah. And, you know, as a business owner, it's nice to have somebody actually hold you accountable too. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that's working out for you. So things are going much better. And you, you started some growth, uh, the big growth spurt in December of last year, correct? Yes. Yeah, so um, things really started taking off. We haven't really marketed in seven years. So we were just kind of watering the, you know, a little bit here and there and started picking up. And um, we grew a little bit. Then we went to uh, GrowthCon, mm -hmm. you know, got charged and we decided to platform with Cardone Ventures, you know, and I was, shocked. I was shocked that, you know, you guys were with them. And I'm like, hey, man, what a win win situation. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's great. It's a great future thing. But then along comes we're all at the masters in uh, the mastermind in Reno at the beginning of the end of um, February, beginning of March. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're at the mastermind, and that's when all the news starts rolling down. And I'm thinking, oh my God, are we even going to be able to get home? And so. Um, you know, I kind of let my kids go do their thing and I started saying, okay, we got to make some plans just in case this gets bad. Yeah. Uh, and so we had talked some during that, that week. And, um, yeah, when we got back, I, I told everybody, I said, get ready. Cause uh, I'm fixing to hit the gas pedal and shove it through the floor and y'all better have your seat belts on because <laughs> we are going to be running. Did that scare anybody off? Uh, yeah, we actually lost one employee. Um, you know, in a time of crisis, you really um, find out who's on board and you know, one out of nine employees is not bad. That's not bad at all. So you hit the gas pedal, you were having this great growth. So tell us, what did you, what was your plan? How are you going to reach out to your patient base? How are you going to get new patients in? How are you going to assure people that you're going to stay open? Uh, how did you go about that? Yeah, you know, and that was one of the first things. So what we did is I said, we need to go back and pull our patient list, not just our new patient list for the past six months. Um, and so what we did was we printed those names out, started divvying them up, came in on the weekend and started making phone calls. Um, and it wasn't so much to, you know, hit them up for business or anything. It was just to say, hey, guys, you know, we understand what you're going through. Uh, if you need us, we're here. Uh, we have telemedicine now. 
and that really took off for us because <clears throat> we have an older population uh, part of our yeah. practice and so we were making phone calls and then we, we went back to a year and now we're uh, we're over 300 phone calls in wow wow so your growth did it plummet did it slow down did it oh, no. oh no oh no our and i um you know i'm listening to your your cast and everything and i just i uh, really don't want to say much i mean we're having a, a bang up year you know we're up 30 percent across the board and um you know i'm hearing how much everybody's really struggling and um but i, I tell you there's not much sleep going on right well i gotta tell you the three guests we've had today are all doing extremely well even in this time of crisis yourself included and all three of you the similar trait uh every one of you at the beginning of this crisis said charge let's go let's do this let's take on responsibility yes you know and um this is it, it's a it's a disaster you know but there's always disasters you know we all have a higher purpose and goal and it's not what we're doing now and so there is a better outcome we have to stay positive with so you you mentioned the podcast how have they helped you and how have they helped your staff um, I've actually reached out to people uh, they have questions and you know I've got some answers not all of them but I'll reach out through them through Facebook because we all are Facebook friends and mm -hmm. we just talk back and forth say hey what's working for you this is working for us Hey, uh, you know, like the DME program rolled out and a lot yep. of people don't know that April 1st, Medicare changed all their modifiers. So anything they're billing out is kicking back. And I'm like, hey, wow. we're researching that now. We're going to have it fixed and I'll let you know. Yeah, good. Awesome. So you're, you're continuing to grow. Um, what do you think uh, the future looks like? What do you think this is going to, it looks like there's light at the end of the tunnel, but what do you see happening down the road? Well, we had already started working with our staff um, and training, and um, our goal is we're acting like, in our mind, it's not even happening. We're going to continue with our plans, and we're taking precautions where we need to. You know, we're being, you know, extra clean, you know, wearing masks when we need it and doing things like that. But we plan on continuing to grow. Our, we're going to open some practices and um, make this happen. Yeah. Are you reaching out to take any burden off of the urgent cares and the, the um, emergency rooms in your area? Or is that yeah. you've been too busy? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we, uh, some of our employees stopped by and said, hey, guys, you know, we're open. And there really wasn't a whole lot of people in there. It was kind of shocking. <laughs> a lot of people are avoiding it. Yeah. 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 And Our so we, uh, we're, getting, we're actually getting some emergency care here. Uh, people yeah. are busting their fingers. We're sewing them back up and just keep moving. Yeah, we've uh, the the previous guest said that um, he had a guy call up and said, "I think I fell, I fell off a ladder. I think I broke my shoulder. I need to get an X-ray, but I don't want to go to the emergency room. Can you guys do it there?" And uh, they brought him in. They took an X-ray. He didn't break it. He separated it. They were able to put it back in place, and now he's doing a rehab program with them. So <laughs> it's amazing. One of our clients in California, Dennis Buckley, reached out through the um, Chamber of Commerce and let all the hospitals know. I will take all your back pain and neck pain patients to unburden you. So he's been getting flow that way. So uh, yeah, it's just, it, it all depends on how you look at it in my point of view. I mean, you look at it the way you've looked at this crisis, hey, I, I'm gonna do my part to help my community and you're getting rewarded for it. I think your biggest reward is probably gonna come after this crisis is over. That's my gut feeling. What do you think? Yeah, I, th I think there's gonna be a little bit of a lag, but I think people are gonna be, they're, they're hungry. They want to get out of the house. They want to see people. I think it's, um, I almost feel like it's a reset for our country. You know, everybody was pulling at each other, but man, now all I'm seeing is people are helping each other. You know, yeah. it's like, I want to start a U2 movement versus a Me Too movement, because if I'm right. helping you and you're helping you, then things really take off. Pass it forward movement. Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. So is there anything you'd like to say to our listeners about keeping, uh, keeping the, the shoulder to the grindstone during this whole crisis? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, with, with every crisis, there's always an outcome. It's not the end. Uh, we all have them. We all have our stories. Um, we can come together, I think, as a group, whether you're part of AMI or not, and work with each other to get through these things, because that's what we're here. That's called community, you know. And, yeah. and don't forget, there is, a, there is a God up there that's watching over us, and there's a reason why things happen. That's true. That is true. Well, I appreciate the work you've done in your community, and I appreciate the work you've done for your patients and for your employees. And I'm glad you're part of the AMI group because this is exactly the type of people we want to be associated with because we're looking to change healthcare. And uh, from the very beginning, 
I believe, and, and my partners have believed that this is a time for us to promote the idea of getting the body to heal itself um, in this crisis, because there's nothing else can help this. There's really no treatment for this. There's no cure for it. Um, I don't know if you know this, but the, uh, the study that we talked about at our mastermind in Reno has been repeated. And it's being repeated right now in the United States where they're doing the, um, the uh, IV stem cells to the COVID-19 patients. Did you know that's happening? Yeah, I've heard there's a few popping up and they're doing yeah. some studies and they're getting amazing results. Oh, uh, so far, and they've done it in Israel as well. So far, 100% of the people in the study, and I think in Israel, they were taking seriously critically ill people. And 100% uh, of the people who got the treatment is better in like less than a week. So that's incredible. Um, so I think the biggest reward that's going to come is people are going to see you as a leader in your community. You stayed in there. You offered help to the community. You offered help to your your employees, your patients. Um, and I think people are going to remember that for a long time and it'll help your practice in the long run. So thank you for doing what you did and thank you for being part of this movement. You bet. Okay. So um, this is Dr. Mike Carberry. This has been another episode of the AMI Daily Alert. And uh, we've had three amazing individuals who did not back down in this crisis, but charge forward and they are getting rewarded for it. And that's not why you did it, but I know that it's, it's deserved because you're doing a lot for your community more than others. So I hope this has been a great experience for the listeners out there. You've heard us discuss the numbers. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people have logged on to these podcasts and that continues on. I think Jamie said over a million impressions on Facebook alone. So um, we're just gonna keep doing what we have to do until this crisis is over. This is Dr. Mike Carberry. Thank you for listening in. We'll see you tomorrow night.